Tomorrow morning, a quiet retired public servant will go before a pair of House committees and talk about a 448-page document, which is one way of putting it, and given his druthers, it might even be the way former Russia special counsel Robert Mueller would prefer, prefer to have it. It is not safe to say how people see it here in Washington, nor how people all, all over the country will likely see it tomorrow. House Democrats will be questioning him tomorrow, spent the day prepping for it. The president's Republican defenders circulated talking points, which CNN has now obtained. The president has been tweeting and talking about it, no surprise. And this is, whether he thinks it ought to be or not, a key moment in his presidency and a critical one for the country. And even if Robert Mueller stays within the confines of his report, as he says he will, it is still tremendously important, or at least it could be. Because not everyone, of course, has read it. In fact, most people have not. And because so many, including the president, especially the president, have been mischaracterizing what the report actually says. I'm quoting now from volume one, page one. The Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping and systematic fashion. That's how the report begins. And I want to read you how it ends. Volume two, page 182. If we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. Based on the facts and the applicable legal standards, we are unable to reach that judgment. Accordingly, while this report does not conclude that the president committed a crime, it also does not exonerate him. This is what Robert Mueller intended to be his final word, and it is not kind to President Trump. Yet, as we said, the president, his defenders, even the attorney general, have been mischaracterizing the report. Here's the president earlier today. So I said this morning, I said, I wrote it out. I said, let's see, because I'm watching. It goes on for years and years. No collusion, no obstruction. Oh, that's not good enough. Let's go more. $40 million. Interview 500 people. They got nothing. I could find something. I could take anybody in this audience. Give me 40 million. Give me unlimited FBI. Unlimited interviews. Unlimited. They interviewed 500 people. Listen to this. 2,500 subpoenas. They did everything. Their collusion, no collusion. They have no collusion. <laughs> then I have an Article 2 where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that because they did a report and there was no obstruction. All right, so keep it honest, the Mueller report did not conclude there was no obstruction of justice. The president's attorney general did. The report spoke at length about how, as a matter of policy, a sitting president could not be indicted. In addition, it laid out many instances of potential obstruction, including this quote from page seven of volume two. Many of the president's acts directed at witnesses, including discouragement of cooperation with the government and suggestions of possible future pardons, took place in public view. That circumstance is unusual, but no principle of law excludes public acts from the reach of the obstruction laws. By the way, one of the Republican talking points that seen as Dana Bash obtained today, which we'll go into later, says, and I quote, the president never interfered with anyone or any part of the investigation and was committed to transparency throughout the entire process. I mean, that, I mean, that's a talking point. It's clearly not true, according to the Mueller report. One of the most egregious examples of him interfering that Mueller documents is how the president tried to get Don McGahn, the White House counsel, to call the acting attorney general and tell him he had to get rid of Mueller. McGahn refused, and when the story leaked, not only did the White House deny it, the president tried to get McGahn to lie about it publicly, deny the president asked him to make that call, which he wouldn't do, and to create a false record to prove that the president never tried to get him uh, to get rid of Mueller. As for another talking point, that the report did not establish that campaign coordinated or conspired with the Russian government in its election interference, that is true. What's not true is the talking point claiming the report confirmed there was no collusion, which it didn't. Dedicated the entire first volume to documenting how the Russian government tried to get Donald Trump elected and how the Trump campaign invited that help in ways that no campaign ever has. And that President Trump recently suggested he'd actually be okay to try again in an interview with George Stephanopoulos the next time a foreign government offers up dirt on a political opponent. The Republican talking points, they, they don't mention that. And although they do slam the Obama administration's response to Russian interference, they don't mention this president's long history of denying that interference even happened. My 
people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. So just to repeat Robert Mueller's first words, the Russian government interfered in the 2016 presidential election in sweeping and systematic fashion. As for his last words on the subject, stay tuned until tomorrow.